Hi everyone, I'm Bonita and I'm here with Jean-Marie. Uh, we are going to talk today about manifesting. This is the first in a four-part series of free live streams that um, will be appearing here on my Facebook page. And then if you go to my website, bonitawoods.org, and I have links in the description here, you can actually sign up for the whole series for free, no cost. Uh, so you can access the videos anytime and see what other awesome free events we have there. Or non-free, but a lot of free stuff too. Jean-Marie is my first guest in this series because she's someone I have known professionally and personally and as one of my teachers, my mentors for a long time. I'm not going to say how many years, a long time. <laughs> it seems anytime I have any question, Jean Marie said the answer, like across the board. <laughs> so, oh, I, I never feel that uh, wise, I should say. <laughs> you have like really helped me stay on my path. And, um, and I'm so glad that over the years we've become close friends and pure professionals as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted Jean-Marie here for our first program because a lot of us think of manifesting as in order to gain something, someone else needs to lose something. Or to gain something, you have to work hard to get it. Or you have to be deserving of it. Or we're going to be over the next month just like breaking all these misconceptions down and showing like, what they really are and what manifesting and how simple what the hard part is getting out of your way the manifesting is easy getting out of your way is hard and jean marie uh has the ability to help people get out of their way with absolute grace and like you know, just without having to go through all of the unnecessary trauma that we think we have to do in order to feel good about ourselves. Um, so before we get into manifesting, Jean-Marie, can you talk a little bit about the sacred anatomy work you do and in general, the work you do and how effective it is? Yes. So um, the background I come to this particular conversation with is one of sacred anatomy energy medicine. Uh, my teacher from in that part of my life is Desda Zuckerman. She's a you very, very unique soul. She uh, had a very serious accident when she was 14. And when she woke up, she was no longer able to see people because what she saw was the beautiful energy that was around all of us. And she spent her life She's now 70, exploring, documenting all of this, this beautiful soul that we have that surrounds us and how we can heal our soul, heal our bodies um, to, as Bonita so elegantly said, just strip away the stuff that keeps us from being able to realize our own dreams. And um, so... It's amazing work. I have a couple uh, photos I can show you later, or not photos, but pics. I can show you later that gives you an idea of what she sees, uh, but it's just absolutely beautiful work and it's all energy related. So, which was really nice for me because I am all about energy and I've always been that way since I was as young as I can remember, <laughs> which is pretty young. <laughs> yeah. I, your childhood stories are amazing. And for anyone interested, I just put in Desta Zuckerman's uh, professional Facebook page and her website in the comments. So you can take a look and get an idea of how she sees people versus the way most of us do. So please continue, Jean-Marie. Yeah, so anyway, um, I have been studying with her and I have just found the magic of what she does to be amazing. And I call it magic. It's really based in shamanic practices, 
but it's shamanic practices that have now been elevated to take into account what she's actually physically able to see and the procedures that she's been able to upgrade um, to really help individuals in an extremely simple, easy way. And also the other thing that I love about her work is that, you know, it just treats us as this incredibly beautiful, whole, magnificent being. And that the soul is no longer something that's intangible, but really a physical anatomy that exists around us and is 20 feet taller and 20 feet deeper than we are. So we're 40 feet tall, we're 40 feet wide, we're 40 feet in depth. And so we're really big and we just have the capacity, especially now with the energy changing and the energy frequency rising to come to know our own beings in a much more beautiful, rich, um, rewarding way. I love this idea of most people, we think of ourselves and our physical body as people who were self-contained. I am myself, I'm alone unless I reach out to connect with others. But with Desta's work, it seems to me, right take on this, our physical body is merely the core of our actual body. And mm -hmm. our actual body is large and connected and gracious, always connected with our soul. Our energy is connected with others long before our physical bodies come near. I just, I love that idea. Yeah. It, it, and we are the manifestation of our soul. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about manifestation, you know, and that's why I love the fact that I'm the first in the series here, because I get to kind of go big. <laughs> <laughs> As everybody then wants to go really small and say, yeah, but I want my house. I want my dream house or I want to. Hey, I got it. <laughs> relationship or, you know, we have a lot of things. I want to feel better in life. I want to, I see all of, you know, what's going on in the world, which I mean, does um, Bonita and I spend a lot of time talking about how devastating what's happening to our world is. You know, it's not just the pandemic, but it's what's happening to our environment, what's happening to the air, what's happening to our streams and our oceans, you know, everything around us um, and what we can do about it um, from an energetic perspective and our participation perspective and knowing that we have these beautiful souls that are capable of so much. Um, but this concept of manifestation, everything is a manifestation. You know, we can accept the idea of a creator or a divine being at the center of all this. And the creation story is a story about manifesting. Um, you know, and what I love is, you know, we've all heard we're sort of from the divine, the divine, you know, created light and from light, everything else has, expanded. So from the love came the light and then everything from that. Uh, but what I really love is that sort of that first manifestation of this life was the inspiration of the divine to create a soul, a spark. And this spark manifested a soul that said, I'm going to create. And the soul, these sparks created these beautiful, beautiful souls that, you know, now surround us. And so I'd like you to think about yourself as the creation of your own sacred soul, that you are its, you know, most precious creation. It loves you, that this beautiful soul that surrounds you, loves you more than you can ever imagine. And it is always there and it's never a bully and it waits for you to ask. It waits for you to be open and to go within and have a conversation. Um, so, you know, what does it really mean to have a soul? What does it really mean to be a manifestation of light, um, of energy itself? Uh, and to, and we have that same desire to manifest and express and create that our soul has and that the divine has. Um, and so we have these beautiful, beautiful energies around us 
lives. Um, we, we live, our soul lives in a subtle energy field and we live here in an electromagnetic field. And um, it's just a beautiful creation. Yes, yes. And you know, when you think about it, it doesn't matter like what religion or theology or belief system you have, creation is a manifestation. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you look at any uh, indigenous people, any culture, the story of first life, the story of humans, the story of human evolution to get like fire and tools and, you know, wear clothing, get a home, create families. All of this was given as like gifts or wisdoms they were given to us. And these are in a way manifestations. Yeah. I mean, they are bringing it down. So, but um, definitely, you know, and those of you watching, most of you know, I have a background in earth sciences and physics. So when I think of creation, I think of it on both sides with the hardcore, the big bang theory, it's still a manifestation and evolution of life. And um, yes, light begins there. Like there was once a big bang of light, but certainly on our spiritual metaphysical side, we talk about source, which is pure love and light, creating life for each of us to go forward and have adventures. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so we are manifesting all the time. We don't real, we don't think of ourselves as manifesting all the time, especially since we manifest a lot of things that we don't necessarily like. <laughs> or we like initially and then we kind of outgrow it and we're like, okay, well, now that I'm done with that. And that's actually part of the purpose of life is to create, to explore, to outgrow and look for, you know, another way of um, being in the world. And mm -hmm. we use emotion uh, as one of the mechanisms to help us create and manifest. But what's really, really cool is the soul itself. Um, I'm going to, let me, let me, I, I'm going to, can I share my screen? Uh, um, I'll show them a picture. Let's see if I can, I don't know. I don't know how to give you permission to share it. Is oh, it a sacred oh. anatomy picture? Yeah, that's okay. okay. You know what? I can bring one up. Give me a moment and I'll bring one up. I can also show the picture of the front of the book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll find a picture to bring up. Okay. What I wanted to do was find, unfortunately, in the book itself, there's not really a good picture of what Desda sees, although this comes close. Because um, she sees us as light. So can you imagine waking up at the age of 14 after knocking your head on the ground and yesterday you saw your mother and your father and your grandmother and uh, all of your friends and today this is what you see and you can't and find them. Sean, we point to where the physical body is so they understand just how big around. So this, this is her book, Your Sacred Anatomy. Yeah. This is the soul that she sees and on the outside, similar to what you had just seen are all these beautiful, beautiful colors. And mm -hmm. there at the very, very center of our being is where the soul manifests us as individuals, way here at the center of the being and our hearts are literally at the center of our structure. And you know what? Um, I hope Desta won't be upset with me for this but I am going to do a quick screen share. The, today when she did her Sangha garden, I screenshot the first picture because oh. I thought it was so beautiful. Yes, yes. So I'm going to bring that up. So everyone, this is like, I don't even know how to fully interpret this, but you see the tiny person in the middle and then the 20 foot wide in all directions. And of course, Desda's lovely picture on the right there. The 20 foot wide in all directions, the body, 
And then you see all the lines flowing even further and the colors radiating mm -hmm. with, um, you know, and this is not, now here's my question, Jean-Marie, the color radiating out, do you know, is that like the soul's auric field or is that still continuing with the soul's energy? Um, so what we have as beautiful, magnificent electromagnetic beings is an aura around us. And this aura actually radiates out. So a lot of people have seen aura pictures. That's really just, if you see where the green um, layer is, that's sort of the edge of our electromagnetic field in the center of this beautiful being. And we actually radiate light out into the universe. Right. Um, we are so all connected as one, as part of everything within us is a connection to all creation, every multiverse that there is. Not just our universe, not just the planets, but the multiverse, we are connected to everything. Excellent. So one of the reasons that I wanted to keep this picture up is because when I spoke to Jean-Marie about manifestation, like, and again, I have been studying with masters all over the world on this subject. How do they make it happen? Um, and many people, it's about an internal process. But when I spoke to Jean-Marie, she was talking about how you, in the 20 feet in all directions around you, you clear channels. Like, I think about it, um, and I'm going to say, this is how I interpreted Jean-Marie, and then <laughs> you can go in and tell everyone <laughs> how I should have interpreted. But when I think about like, if you have a clogged drain, like if you have a drain you're not like cleaning and using very well and it gets all clogged up, um, you don't then go and scold the drain. You know, you clean out the drain so it can be functional. So instead of like getting all self-doubting about manifestation and, you know, can I get what I want and do I deserve and all that, Jean-Marie said, when you are in that sort of state of being, channels of energy in the 20 feet like i was assuming above you but i don't know which channel is manifesting okay. these areas can become kind of clogged because you're not using them and stuff gets jammed up in there so you go in and you clear those out and then the manifesting energy can come into you and help you like it's like trying to run electricity in a house that turn the electricity off you gotta like no, it's like a clogged plug, a plug that's no longer working. You're there trying you go. to do it, but you can't turn on the light because that that one. So that's where you see the layers around the center being, and the layers are one of the seven systems of our soul. And that's where our story lives. And so what happens is, you know, when we have things either from this life, past lives, or in some cases, our own DNA that comes from the lineage that we're born into, we have karmic issues. Um, and we have to resolve those and clean those out before the full energy will flow. We also get wounded and the soul gets wounded and we can heal the soul of these wounds. And the essence of everything that actually heals us is all about just an understanding of what the situation was about and what we learned from it. And the stronger and more complete our understanding is, then these energies just can be released. In essence, we all do this all the time, but occasionally things get stuck. And that's when you need an energy healer to help you, you know, relieve some of those things. But for the most part, you have been learning and releasing and moving on constantly throughout your life. Um, but there are some things that the soul can actually get wounded. Um, and those are harder from a perspective of being in this lifetime to remove those but because of Desda's amazing work we have we now have ways of healing the soul that often or used to get happen after death when we would go and we would heal in some of the healing temples but 
um, now we have brought some of that information here so that we can actually heal the soul here, which makes us brighter and lighter because everything is about manifesting light into every cell, into every particle of our entire being. So any place where energy has been bound and kept releasing it so that it too can express and we can become this beautiful being that we see in front of us here in this picture. That is awesome. Okay, I'm going to step away from the screen share now. Okay. <laughs> and, and we're back just us on the screen. Yes. And just so you know, you actually have a whole, there's a layer um, in our um, in the layer system where we have a whole strata that's just fully consumed with manifestation. So manifesting divine inspiration, manifesting, you know, when you, that, that light bulb goes off, actually your whole, your soul structure is actually on fire, you know, with this divine inspiration and it comes through the point of transmutation and it moves into the mental layers and mm -hmm. we're like, aha, look at what I can create now. <laughs> and it, sometimes we get that inspiration and we run with it. And sometimes for whatever reason, we are unable to run with it and um, not manifest it. And when we want things, you know, we can't have everything we want but we can have a lot of what we want. Um, yes. And the reason we can't have everything is some of it is just of no interest to our souls. You know, it's really the interest of the personality that wants something, but the soul often has a bigger idea. And growing up, people used to say to me, well, why aren't you like setting goals? Why aren't you figuring out what you really want? And I used to laugh and I'd say, I can't think big enough. <laughs> I, if you ask me what I want, I want this little thing here. But if I open myself up to allow the universe to give to me, I get this much. Um, it's just... Uh, and it's not to say that there aren't things that I've really wanted and I've gotten them and I've like, oh gosh, that's really not what I wanted. I thought it was, but it wasn't really. So I sort of opened myself up to allowing the universe, to allowing my soul to bring to me what it is that I needed. And it was far more beautiful than anything that I personally had been able to create. Yeah. So there's another concept that I would like to talk about, which is this concept of um, how to only have to work on our own stuff. That as human beings, we have evolved in a way that we have merged our souls, merged our beings um, with other people because it was one of the ways that communities kept everybody healthy and safe. And we know it now mostly because a lot of us are empathic. You know, we, we calm down, we change our frequency, we resonate with someone else. They feel a whole lot better when they leave. And sometimes we feel worse. And yes, <laughs> merging which was good when we lived in communities of 20 or 30 people. And that's the, you know, pretty much the entirety of all of the humans we ever met in life. And today, when we go to the grocery store, we meet a hundred people. And if we're merging with a hundred people and we're making them all feel better, the problem is, is that we walk home with all of their problems. And then we, we're not really, manifesting for ourselves because the first thing we have to do is now heal all of the little problems that we've picked up from everybody and sometimes they're big problems mm -hmm. um, that desda talks about the idea of living on the edge of our soul you know and communicating from that place as opposed to from the electromagnetic essence of us that we are at the center of our being 
And the way that I think about this the most and the most helpful, because I was one of those people and actually I ended up getting very, very sick because I had just picked up way, way too much stuff. And I, I always loved that people loved to feel, felt really good after they left, but I ended up having to work through their stuff. The problem is, is when you take someone else's problem onto yourself and you resolve it, then they still haven't learned their lesson. So they have to do it again. So they got to this wonderful place where they'd worked so hard, where you know this thing was now right in their face and they had to figure it out and find a solution and absorb and understand all of the emotions that were there, the way things played out, you know, and how they um, needed to heal themselves uh, as a result. You know what? They now had to go create that whole thing again. So sometimes, you know, I started thinking about this from my own perspective is like, oh, gee, I don't want people taking my lessons from me because right. they have to redo it. And I don't want to have to keep redoing. I want to learn so I can move on myself. I put a plug in for Desda because for the first time, she's going to teach the EDGE class online at the end of starting at the end of January. Yep, I'm registered. I recommend to everybody. I I am not skilled enough yet to teach yeah. it because it requires a great deal of skill to help someone find their edge and to hold it. And so um, mm -hmm. highly recommend that class to anybody. If you're an empath out there, you know, go look and learn this skill yeah. um, because it's so freeing. Um, talk about being able to manifest one's own life and only one's own life. I love this idea. I mean, you know, with Prana Shakti, of course, we connect our energy only to the highest frequency of love of all dimensions flowing into us and from us outward. So anyone who comes near us before they even get close to our body, they're being infused with the highest frequency of love. So anyone who doesn't want that, they go away or they get really angry. You know, <laughs> they stand at the perimeter screaming. So Idea, idea of learning to go to your edge and greet people there mm -hmm. while your core is able to be like pure. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I am so excited to take this class. I really am. It's, it's, I have taught classes of like massage therapists who get like health issues from their clients that they absorb through the and of course, we I know empaths who can't even travel on airplanes or trains because of all the energy they pick up. And so this this is a, a powerful skill. And it seems to me, it puts you in such a place of personal power. Your manifestations are going to be magnificent. Yeah. And it puts you in a place of compassion. When we're at our edge, we're in a compassionate place. So um, it takes away the reaction. Yeah, there is no response. There's no right and wrong. There's no response. There's just a place someone else is. Mm -hmm. And you can be with them and feel, literally feel great and wonderful, like you're ready to dance, but be compassionate enough well, they're in their sorrows, their anger, their distress, their, um, you know, whatever it is that has, we'll call it triggered them uh, mm -hmm. with compassion. And yeah. but walk away still feeling great and realizing that, hmm, you know, I can hold this, the beauty and the love that I want to hold within my own being and not. Yeah. We have to shift frequencies to um, resonate with somebody. And then the other thing that it does, when we're held in real compassion, when we're witnessed in that way, we actually are given permission to shift. So shift. It's, it's one of the greatest gifts we can give others. That's nice. I love how the work you do takes away a uh, judgment value, mm -hmm. you know, that 
the amount of times people say to me, well, I'd love to manifest, but I'm trying to be humble as though if you're a humble person, you don't get to have nice things or, you know, I'm trying to be humble. So I don't want to be arrogant. So I don't know if I'm deserving or like, there's a lot of, but with the work you do, none of that's even an issue. It's, you know, yeah. anatomical, mm -hmm. you know, clearing channels, flicking sp switches, turning on lights, being yeah. in the right part of your being. Yeah. I love that. Uh, yes. I, you know, the ego, the egoic personality, which is what I call it, it's an egoic nature, um, is one that, um, likes one up and one down. It likes mm -hmm. something to be better than something else. And once we really begin to let go of that, what we realize is that we've lived many, many lives. We have consciously and unconsciously killed. We have consciously and unconsciously, you know, maimed. Um, we have consciously and unconsciously done wonderful, beautiful things, you know, that all of these things have lived within us and within all of those things, because we live in a dual world, we gain understanding and we learn the consequences of all of those things. And that's actually what allows us to grow as a soul. And that's what allows us to clear out these um, congested energies you know, realizing that it's not about being good, bad. It's about holding light and, you know, allowing light to be in. And of course, there are some things, you know, you don't give, you know, a match to a three-year-old. You know, just like with us, you know, we only, we only get what we can really handle. Um, and we do have to be careful of the egoic personality wanting to create judgments of something better than something else, you know, or glorifying the self, um, you know, and that ego is very, very tricky. <laughs> you can be mm -hmm. humble and have a great deal of stuff. And then suddenly one day you go, oh, somehow I'm better than somebody because I've got all this stuff. And you're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We've seen that happen. We've seen that happen to many of our peers and friends. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that people would love it if we shared a couple of our favorite manifestation stories. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to start because my favorite one is actually about you and your mom were my inspiration. Oh, okay. <laughs> so tell us quickly about your mom and how she would get things that were missing or taken. Oh, oh, yes. So we had a very, very active house growing up with lots and lots of ghosts, as well as some extraordinarily powerful personalities. My brother, my sister, my mother <laughs> in this house. <laughs> and also my mother always liked to help. She was, part of her work was to help people pass over and people who had passed over to move into the light. So our house was hopping. Um, <laughs> and things would disappear all the time. And what we learned was just to ask for them back. Um, and sometimes things would be stolen and we'd get those back too. But my favorite story was my mother, she had a jade ring and it was taken. We knew who had taken it, but my mother didn't it was somebody in the family and my mother did not want this um, to be a family issue. So she was standing at her dresser and she just said, okay, I'm tired of this. I loved my ring and I want my ring back. And it just came flying over her shoulder and landed <laughs> on the dresser. <laughs> and this was so much a part of who all were that I never lost anything. I didn't know really what it was to lose something. I knew what it was to wait five years to get something back. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, for example, I had some uh, beautiful pearl earrings that I really liked and they were gone for like two years. And one day I was vacuuming my, my rug and I looked down and on the corner of my rug were my two earrings. <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> so your story about your mom has always stuck with me. Uh -huh. And then a year and a half ago, I was at a summer uh, drumming ceremony. It was a big one. There were a lot of people there, a lot of shamanic people, but people, but of all kinds of healing and outdoor summer drumming ceremony. And there was a group of kind of mean girls, like spiritual mean girls there. <laughs> and they're yeah. being a little... Those in our lives, don't we? <laughs> And they were being like really catty to other people. And um, so some of them were being nice to me, but some of them were being really like snide, like making the comments that sound like compliments, but they're actually kind of rude or, you know, just kind of making sure that I got bumped to the back of the line to get my feather or whatever, like, um, and I, whatever. Um, it, it meant far more to them than it did to me. You know, I was there, it was like a long, like six hour ceremony. So obviously in order to be one with the ceremony, they were not really part of my energetic connection. Uh, there were also a lot of amazing people there, but so it's summertime, we're outdoors. All of us had our shoes off. And at the end of the night, when we we're packing up our stuff to go, like it started afternoon, it ended like really late. When we we're packing up, someone had taken my shoes. And this was like way out. We had a long drive. I'm there with my mom, long drive. It's late at night. We were exhausted. And I knew there were a lot of speed traps and I was nervous about driving barefoot, <laughs> you know, late at night. Um, and I'm asking around, did anyone accidentally take my shoes? And these like mean girls were hanging out in a little group outside of someone's car. And they're like, he no. I'm like, seriously? So my mom and I sat in my car and I said, Jean-Marie's mother, when things were taken from her, she would call them back and they would appear. So we know this can happen. And my mom said, oh yeah, that's happened to me on occasion. I'm like, good, then you know what, I mean, you know my mom, or <laughs> she's the, the rockinist. So I said, okay, let's sit here and call my sandals back to me. So we did, we sat in the car and we just like got in, you know, of course the energy was really high after six hours of drumming, so and dancing, so we called it back. And my, uh, there's nothing. I'm like, oh, so I drove home barefoot when we got to my house and we opened it right there in the backseat of my car were my shoes. Right there. <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Jean-Marie's mother. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I felt so happy. And they were brand new, it was my first time wearing them. So, <laughs> so um, yes, <laughs> yes, this, it's like one of my favorite manifestation moments ever because like, on the more spiritual side, I felt connected to you and your mom and to my mom and, you know, these shoes I loved returned. And on a more petty side, <laughs> these mean girls didn't get to play their mean trick on me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, when you're middle-aged and you're still in high school, that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah by people who behave in those kinds of ways towards us. Absolutely. And, um, and in particular, they were acting out. Yeah, yeah. But, but it just goes to show you do not need to be taken advantage of just because you choose to be humble and not get into confrontations. I didn't feel the need to go into their games or to get into that energy at all, but it doesn't mean I had to be, you know, belittled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you had to lose something that was meaningful to you. Exactly. And it doesn't mean they got it or learned a lesson. You know, they probably forgot about this or figured one of the others had them. It had nothing to do with them. 
and that's the thing that they were trying to get a confrontation but i stayed within my energy and continued with my experience right right yeah yeah but so um i will say we uh were getting to have about 10 minutes left um people have responded to this series with all sorts of requests so wanting to manifest a house i mean certainly jean marie i love your house thank you and I'm not sure how much was manifested or earned or what, but your house is amazing. And I just manifested a house for myself in Maine and a car and full scholarship to go back to college for yet another degree. So um, yes, we can manifest these things. Uh, some people manifest, want to manifest to help protect their families from COVID or to, you know, have better things happen to people they love. Uh, some people are want to manifest uh, healing our planet, healing the oceans, uh, protecting animals. Some people are curious about manifesting healthier energy grids, mandalas on our planet. And, but all of these come to the same techniques, really. Yes. I mean, not the exact also, same. Yeah, and also ethically, what we can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. So I have an ex extremely strong ethical um, belief because um, to me, our bodies and our souls are like our homes. Mm -hmm. And so from an ethical perspective, I will not do anything energetically with regard to somebody, unless I have their permission. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, anything that we co-own, so we co-own the streets, we co-own portions of the White House, portions of government buildings, we, po we co-own all of the land that's owned by the federal government. Um, you know, jointly, the oceans, the air is jointly all of ours, you know, all of these things we can send energy to, you know, we can help to heal. Um, and, you know, it's really the neutralization of energy that creates the healing, unattached energy heals immediately. So yes. it's attachment to things that creates blockages. Um, and so in manifesting, what is so important is bringing to you things that are yours or can be yours, um, but you also have to make room for that. So one of the Flip sides of wanting something is letting go of something, clearing. And so clearing the space, not just healing the space of your own soul and your own physical body, but it's healing the house that you're living in that holds energy, you know, clearing that space and letting it go um, so that there is room for transformation, so that there is room for something new to come in. So, and holding that shift, because a lot of times, you know, we were talking earlier about how one can re-traumatize oneself. So it's, you heal yourself and then holding that shift. So then new things can come, you know, transformation can actually occur. And so if you're living in a place that you don't like, you know, if you rent, you have the capacity to energetically change it. If you own, you it's yours, so you can energetically change it. So clearing space um, is the other side of all of this, creating space for transformation, creating space to become harmonious and balanced. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's absolutely true. Like when um, 
the first stage of manifestation is first of all thinking about what it is you want resonating with what you your heart's desire and then releasing everything that's blocking that mm -hmm. That's a big word, really seeing everything that's blocking that. That's a lot of work. So all the stuff that's preventing you from living your dream life. <laughs> oh, so true. So true. Yeah. And of course, in uh, Prana Shakti, we say we do not need someone's permission to send the healing energy to them because it's all based on love you don't need someone's permission to love them however you can't force it i can send all the healing i want towards you and, but if you don't want it it just goes wherever it goes because you're just sending out well you know there are, love. We love. there are people we love and that's mm -hmm. all natural um and yes that's that's from your heart we're connected you know absolutely that is but I don't go in and make any changes. No, <laughs> no, not without someone's go ahead. That would be like someone going into your house and rearranging the furniture while you were at work. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's none of that's allowed. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the cleaner you keep your space energetically, the less likelihood of pulling in something you don't want, manifesting something you don't want. This is true. Um, and the easier it is to manifest that which you want um, energetically. Yeah. Yeah. And with the work you do, people don't even need to worry about, you know, do I deserve it? Can I do it? Is it my right? Or, you know, it's about really cleaning out your energetic space, cleaning out your you know, spiritually anatomical body all around you, clearing out your connections, mm -hmm. releasing unnecessary karmic clutter. Yeah, the so stuff that you up for clearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the soul is so amazing. I mean, it knows what it needs. You know, I don't know what somebody needs. It's the soul that says, this is what I need to help my manifestation here at the center of me <coughs> yeah have, be healthy happy balanced which is which is the beauty of it that is perfect mm -hmm. healthy happy balanced harmonious mm -hmm. yeah. beauty in the center of it which is us our physical being it's yeah. yeah. Uh, well, this is our time. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful sentiment for the end of our session. I want to thank everyone for joining us. And um, we will put the entire video up on um, the, the link to my website, bonitawoods.org. Mm -hmm. And Wednesday at four, uh, Kim, the time master, is going to join us. Her classes in time bending are literally the most requ re requested classes I've ever had, ever, ever hosted business. Um, and we're going to talk about manifestation and time and timing. That's going to be fun. Next Sunday, one week from minus one hour from now, Mariam Sardari and I are going to do spoon bending while talking about manifestation. So if you wonder, am I empowered to do it? Grab your spoons and join us because if you can take a solid object and make it malleable, you can do anything. Well, and if I can jump in here, mm -hmm. the beauty of that is that it demonstrates to you in a very physical way that you are connected to everything and all you need to do is ask right all you need to do is ask yes and then saturday january 9th we'll have a panel group of manifestors amazing powerful effective manifestors sharing their techniques their skills their 
uh, anecdotes. It's going to be fun. So mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing you guys. Thank and you. Also, since um, I think a lot of people couldn't come get in if they want to post their questions, um, mm -hmm. I'm happy to answer questions. I got a lot of thumbs up for that. <laughs> Yes. All right. Thank you guys and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And have a wonderful new year. Yes. And enjoy all this new energy. Oh, yes. This is the time for us to grab and manifest. <laughs> right. Bye. Bye bye.